Hey creative, this video is about composition and art. This is the rule of thirds, this is the golden ratio. Okay, bye. But wait, there's more. Hey, I'm Sonia, and Copycat is a YouTube channel where I teach as I learn about artistic growth in motion design. This video series is about concept for motion design. Yes, yes, I have been lied to. Composition is not only about the terribly mysterious golden ratio. That's not even the biggest part. It's like everything has finally clicked. Well, thankfully, there are a few kind souls who talk about the real deal. The last video of this series was about the creative process. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the principles that make a good composition. Then I'll show you how these principles are put into practice in some contemporary masterpieces. Guys, I am so excited. Neos, a motion designer from Barcelona, sent me her showreel. Stick around till the end to check it out. Composition creates subtext. When you arrange elements thoughtfully, it tells a story. You guide the viewer's eye towards the thing you want the viewer to focus on, which emphasizes the message you want to communicate. In order to catch the human eye's attention, you first have to define a focal point. And here are some of the things you can apply to this focal point. Tonal contrast. When the color tones are highly contrasted, it instantly draws in the eye. Example, black, white, black, white, black, white. That's just how it is. If I put a black and white filter on, this is still the most contrasted. <laughs> Everything else is mid-tone and grayish. Sharp and hard edges or areas of high complexity are also interesting. Again, you're still looking at me right here. Complexity. Since we're talking about moi, the human gaze is also very recognizable in the frame. The first thing you look for is another person. We search for connections with other humans. However, if I'm looking at something else, my gaze directs yours. Intersecting lines also stand out, as well as anything that's different in a scene. So again, with this background of the horizon, the horizontal lines intersect with my standing figure. Another good trick is to use very few bright, warm colors and this works especially well if the rest of the composition is a complementary color. While guiding your viewer through a story, think about supporting elements. The eye follows interesting form and spatial depth. When you're making a composition, you can't just have the subject, otherwise it would be obvious and look empty. Fill in the space with elements the eye doesn't prioritize. The eye passes over similar colors, soft edges, and low tonal contrast. You can have elements in the composition that aren't obvious at first, but you can make them stand out but by not blending them into the background. Now, last but not least, placement. This is the principle that is best known, the rule of thirds and the golden ratio. The rule of thirds is pretty straightforward. You split the frame into three parts, horizontally and vertically. Placing your elements on these axes creates tension and makes the composition more dynamic. See, for my videos, my eyeline is always on the upper third of the horizontal line, and sometimes I'm on the left vertical line or the right vertical line. I'm never in the dead center. The golden ratio is a study of proportions. So I'm not gonna get into how to make a golden ratio, but the spiral it creates is present in some patterns in nature. In a frame, you can get four golden ratios. And that, my friend, is how I have my super grid. It has the rule of thirds, the golden ratio, and all the diagonals from the important points. I mean, there could be more diagonals, but I thought this was enough. <laughs> so now I'm back at my desk and we're gonna look at some contemporary artwork and how the artists use composition masterfully. The first piece is by Beeple, Mike Winkleman. Mike Winkleman is known for his everyday pieces. This is one from the 8th of March, 2020. He's been making artwork every single day for 4,697 days so far. Safe to say, everything he makes is a masterpiece. Funny story, I actually met Beeple without realizing it was him. I totally shat my pants after. Good times. The first thing I noticed in this piece is contrast. 
There's a huge human body being searched by tiny humans. While I said the eye is usually attracted to warm colors, here we go straight for the bright neon blue because the entire composition is red. If we put this in black and white, the lower left area is the most contrasted. It's also the most detailed. He definitely wants us to look here. There's a strong diagonal from bottom left to top right. And the point of interest is on the intersecting lines between the blue area and the red. The diagonal goes straight through the two tiny humans as well. I'll put my super grid on here and yeah, the golden ratio points exactly to this number, X29. The lower golden ratio points to these cans of fuel, which is interesting. The upper right points to the giant's nipple. I don't know if he did that on purpose. If he wrote X29, that means he must have at least subconsciously put a little bit of thought into it, so maybe it means something to him. That's what makes a good piece of art, you know? The more you look at it, the more you discover. On Instagram, he called this piece therapy. My interpretation of this is that there's some freaky mind control going on and we're being brainwashed. Thanks for woking me up, people. Next up is a still from the Spider-Man movie into the Spider-Verse. This movie is an accumulation of everything that is spectacular in cinema and animation. I don't like to watch movies twice, and I've watched this one at least four times. A few things stick out for me when I first look at this. The first being how the piece is split in half. There's a really interesting grayish blue gradient that goes from dark blue to mid-tone, then cuts to light blue and then mid-tone again. The only thing linking the two parts is Miles, who has some really bright red on him. His costume is black and you can tell it's the darkest color in the composition. If I put a black and white filter on, you can see the lightest color is the eyes on his mask. There's a lot of tension in this piece. I mean, not to mention that he's falling upwards into a whole bunch of buildings. The leading lines are really strong here. His body creates a cool curve here pointing to the city and then all the buildings are pointing outwards. When you look downwards, then all you see is his shoelace and you go right back around to him. For me, this is a moment of pause between so much action. You know in movies, in the midst of all the action, there's a slow-mo moment where the character is like, what the hell is going on? And the action just speeds up back up again, <laughs> which also describes the movie pretty well. Mile is on a hero's journey, but a huge chunk of the movie is about his disbelief. A symbol for that is how his shoelaces are untied. Like he's chosen, but he just doesn't have it together. Last but not least, I want to show you this photograph by Sebastião Salgado. He's my favorite photographer. His work is so rich and full of texture. I believe the story behind this picture is that he camped out near a waterhole in Namibia for a while, leaving a spotlight on at night for the leopard to get used to the light. So obviously the action is happening on the lower third of the piece. All the lines are horizontal and the only thing that breaks them is the subject. If I put my super grid on here, you can see the far end of the water hole is exactly on the lower third line. The leopard is just off center on a really interesting diagonal that points towards one of the golden ratios. The near end of the water hole goes through the two lower golden ratios. There's just this awareness of space and proximity to a creature that could chomp me in a second if it wanted to. There's so much tension in this piece. The leopard's gaze is piercing into my soul. Every time I see this photograph, digitally or in a gallery, I feel like I'm the one the leopard is looking at. It's so intimate. Another thing that makes this so fascinating is the use of artificial light in nature. That contrast makes you realize how special and rare this is to see. If you're making a composition, remember about tonal contrast, color, the background versus the foreground, and placement. I hope you enjoyed these examples by amazing contemporary artists that inspire me every single day. And now for Noose's showreel.
Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out my other videos in the Concept Promotion Design series and leave a comment if you have any feedback. See you next time!